In anticipation of my new solo movie coming out, I've partnered up again with Epic Desk to bring you all a limited edition mouse pad with the thumbnail art on it. Last time I made a mouse pad with Epic Desk, hundreds of you commented after the pre-order window was closed, asking where you could get one. Since these are limited edition, we decided to do another drop with new art, and this one is absolutely insane. Nobody comes close to the build quality of Epic Desk, and they're the only mouse pad company licensed and endorsed by Face Punch themselves. All of their products come with certificates of authenticity, so check the link in the description before time runs out on this one too. And thank you all for your support. So look, you're here because you're a solo player. You don't want to constantly farm resources just to get a secure and strong base down. Most raids that happen are offline, so you need a bunker to keep your most valuable loot safe. The Nomad is an ultra-budget solo base with super low upkeep and takes around 27 rockets to fully raid. It doesn't sacrifice being spacious and cozy though because there's no point in having secure loot if you hate playing out of it. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Nomad. As you can see, the build cost and upkeep is almost laughably low, making this perfect for even casual solos and duos. And the footprint is based off of a 1x1, one one, making it super easy to get down. We'll start our base tour by heading into our front airlock. As you can see, we have a standard single door airlock here with a window, and we can use a window skin on that door. An armored door covers two drop boxes, and then we can drop down into our core. We have a few furnaces here and some drop boxes next to a turret that guards everything, and we're actually standing on the floor of our bunker. Over to the right, we have some electric furnaces and storage, and then a loot room on this floor with a battery inside of it. We have our crafting station over here, bed in the middle, and we can pop our bunker by placing a twig roof tile here. You can see we use a furnace as a jump up, and then we can open this garage door, which will reveal the rest of our loot. There's six large boxes worth of loot down here, which is awesome for a bunker. And if we remove these two windows over the TC, we can see that ultra low upkeep. Heading back upstairs, if we remove this twig, you can see how easy it is to replace the bunker, and this can be done from inside or out. Building our base is super easy. We'll find a small plot of land and start with a triangle and a square. We'll enclose those with walls and put a double door frame on the end. Just remember, if you're solo, you don't need code locks, just key lock it. Our TC goes in the compartment about this distance away from the window frame. You can fit a furnace here, as well as a tier 1 and tier 2 workbench. Two large boxes can go next to it, and believe it or not, we can actually still fit a sleeping bag in front of the door. You will have to open it up though, so just be careful. At this point, you'll want to get an airlock on, so just add a triangle to the end and upgrade the sidewall to stone, but the single door frame and roof tile to wood because we'll have to chop these out later. A couple machetes will do the trick though, it's no big deal. You can also use this campfire trick to check for door campers. If your comfort goes above 50%, it's an indicator that somebody's on the other side of the wall. Next, we'll want to build our bunker. Coming to our airlock, we'll place a twig triangle and then upgrade this stone wall. After that, we'll come to the twig foundation and build a triangle, a square, and then build nine triangles off of it. Placing a square at the end will remove the rest of the twig. This includes the triangle foundation here, which leaves the wall floating. Build back with squares, and then finally place triangles, making sure that this stone texture is on the bottom left of each of the triangles. This means that they're actually built off of the pixel gap and not off of the main base. We'll upgrade this last foundation and then delete all of the remaining twigs. At this point, we'll do the exact same build out with a triangle, a square, and then nine triangles off of it. We'll end it with a square and then delete the rest of the twig. Build back again with squares, and again, make sure when you place this last triangle, this stone texture is in the bottom left. We can delete all of the squares, and then place two half walls off of the triangle here. Keep in mind you'll have to upgrade these to HQM. We'll then delete the triangle and replace it with a square. 
The last test to make sure everything is working properly is if you can place this triangle here and get the stone texture in this corner. This build out isn't difficult at all, but just make sure you test this on a build server. The last thing we'll do out here is place the triangle ceiling from this foundation. You have to do it from this side so it snaps onto the right socket. Now it's time for us to get rid of the ceiling tile that we left in wood. So head into your airlock and craft up a couple of machetes. Two of them will get the job done and it'll take no time at all. After that's done, we'll step out of our airlock and place a floor frame from this side. This will ensure that it's snapped onto the right socket as well. You're looking for 92% stability here. Since we see 92%, we know we're good to go. This piece is attached to the main base, not to the pixel gap that the bunker is. Lastly, we can test out the functional bunker by placing a floor tile here. You'll notice it says 10% stable, which is exactly what we want. Placing a twig roof here will open the bunker ceiling. Congratulations, your bunker is up and running, it's functional, and you're ready to go to the next step. By this point, we'll need a little bit more space, so we'll head to the back side of the base where the TC is and upgrade the foundation to HQM. At this point, we just need to honeycomb the base. Coming to the TC compartment, I'm adding a triangle to either side. I'm adding another section of triangle honeycomb over here as well, and then right where our starter airlock is, I'll add partial honeycomb. I won't seal this wall up just yet, so we can still get in. And then on this last side right here, we'll want to make sure we're standing on the triangle foundation so this is off the main base and not the pixel gap. Just like that, we have all of our honeycomb down, and now we can build out the roof ramp entrance. We'll place a triangle right here, and then put half walls all the way around. A full wall goes here, and then a floor tile here. Again, if you haven't upgraded the half walls to HQM, now is the time. The last thing we'll do here is place a roof. As you can see, this roof lines up with where we place the twig roof to open our bunker. We'll want to build our airlock, so we'll start by placing a half wall here. Placement can be a little bit annoying from the inside, but it's super easy if you're on the outside of the base. We'll place a window frame on top of it with a floor tile and a single door here. Over here is our furnace compartment, so we'll put full walls and then some half walls up top for the drop boxes. A double door frame goes here and then just place a half wall above it. Now is the best time to get your drop boxes up here because they can be a little annoying to place when the single door frame's on. We'll finish the single door airlock by placing this here. As you can see, we have a standard single door airlock so nobody's going deep. You can leave this section for a little bit, but just note it is off-sideable right now and has a little hole here. Because the space is so cheap, you might as well just throw the second floor on right now. We'll just wall in the entire perimeter and put a ceiling on it. At this point, we'll want to start using our bunker as the entrance to our base. After we open our bunker up, we'll drop down there and chop out the door frame with a machete. Before you do that though, you can seal off this honeycomb, just to keep yourself safe. Again, it only takes one machete and a couple hits from a second, so crafting one more will get you right through this door frame. We can replace the door frame with a full wall now. We'll also take our furnace from the inside of our starter and use it as a jump up. At this point, your bunker is your main entrance, so if you had to log off or something, you can upgrade the bunker to sheet metal, and this is easily a 10 rocket base. Just make sure your twig roof isn't here when you try to seal it like I did. Things are looking great so far, and you're doing an awesome job. Next, we'll want to build out the interior of the base, which is where things start to get fun. Also, quick note, if the terrain's not great, place a stone barricade right here. As per usual in my videos, we're going to start slapping down double door frames here and getting garage doors everywhere. If you don't have them at this point, use double doors, but that's totally fine. We'll also put a shelf on this side. This one can be a little bit tricky to place, but I find it's easier if you're sitting on the inside of it. In this corner, we'll have a dedicated spot for a large battery, but make sure before you put the window frame on that you have the battery down. Then we'll build out the shelf for our main loot room here. I use the term main loot kind of loosely here. You shouldn't have your most important loot here, as it'll only be protected by eight rockets in the end. All of your really important stuff should go in the bunker. After we get all of the boxes down, we can put a window over the battery. 
the left side, we can place a large box and a few electric furnaces. I did switch up the order a little bit from the tour because I found just progressionally, this is a little bit easier. The roof ramp can block the placement of a workbench there. This is looking great so far, and if you're curious how to wire these up using the full industrial system and electricity, I actually have a TikTok about this. If you haven't followed me on TikTok yet, make sure to do so. I post a bunch of awesome great tips, as well as teasers about new bases. Coming over to the opposite side, we can place our tier 2 and eventually our tier 3 workbenches. Then I'm just going to slap a small box under it and one in front of it. We can also put small boxes in front of this main loot room. Feel free to customize the interior of this base however works best for you. We can finish it off by placing a bed here. Also, at any point, feel free to put a few furnaces over here, and you can actually fit a couple drop boxes above them if you want the extra storage. Nice for charcoal or additional wood. To wrap up the interior of the base, we'll need to go down into the bunker. So we'll pop it open with a twig roof and then start picking up all of the deployables that are in it. We'll place a garage door on this frame and then you can upgrade everything to HQM when you get the resources. You'll want to do the TC compartment before you place down the vending machines. But we can craft up two vending machines and place them over the window with a small gap in between them in the middle. This will allow you to access the TC between the gap. Also, don't forget to upgrade your ceiling tile to HQM because that would not be good. We can place a window and a vertical window embrasure over our TC, which will give us plenty of protection even if somebody makes their way into the bunker. We can place down three large boxes, a small box, and four drop boxes very easily just like this. Quick note with the drop boxes, you might have to angle them a little bit. Sometimes the placement can be weird. And that's it for the interior. We are looking schnazzy. Now that the core is upgraded, upgrading the rest of the base is pretty straightforward. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but because the base is so small, almost everything gets upgraded to sheet metal eventually. Generally, the parts that you can leave stone are the front airlock, the dropbox storage area up top, any double door frames, window frames, and shelves. But all of the walls and ceilings and everything should just get upgraded to sheet metal. It's super, super cheap because the base is so small and it's just worth the peace of mind. I forgot to show it here, but make sure that this tile right here is also HQM next to the bunker entrance. Also, just as a reminder, this bunker is sealable from the inside and the outside so if the bunker is open i can seal it from top like i've shown or i can seal it from the inside here i'll just have to respawn upstairs to reopen it if you've stuck around this long in the video i've got some extra little features to show you we can place a triangle here and then make a little build out here create an oil refinery compartment We can place a door on this and then place our oil refinery into it. Now we have a private and secure oil refinery that we can leave things in. Keep in mind it is soft sidable, so if you wanted to upgrade the foundations to metal, you're more than welcome. The other thing we might want to do is prevent people from door camping our oil refinery and our main entrance. So we can put these triangles right here and put double door frames on all of these sockets. We can place a turret right here and then place chain link on two of them and a chain link gate on the third. This gives you perfect visibility of both doors, your main entrance and your oil refinery, and even gives you some good angles onto the roof. This will help prevent you from getting door camped and save all of your precious crude if somebody camps the refinery. You can make a couple of expansions on this triangle as well if you want a compound. You can put a window on one side and a single door airlock on the other. Just like that, we can slap compound walls around it and put a couple large furnaces in there. I hope you have a lot of awesome wipes out of this base and feel free to customize it. If you do, make sure you drop by my Discord at discord.gg dust and show me what you did. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Mm -hmm.